Welcome to Tomorrow's Tech Today, bringing you the latest in technology, talent, and transformational change. With me, your host, Professor Sally Eaves. And in today's special episode, I'm delighted to be joined by Raj Avatkar, CTO of Juniper Networks. We're discussing all things emerging industry trends, the key industry developments for service providers to focus on today. So Raj, welcome to the show. Great to speak to you again. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Oh, my absolute pleasure. I think probably the best place to start is just to reflect on, obviously we were both together at MWC 2022 really recently. And if we reflect on maybe that experience to start off with, so we had these things coming together, didn't we, in terms of you know, the latest technology trends, this kind of trajectory of innovation going forward, very much front of mind for both of us. And for me, I found that to be you know, what I like to call the age of convergence. So we have things like 5G, IoT, Edge Cloud, AI, et cetera, you know, coming together. It's their integration rather than as a separate part. I'd love you to get your take on that. And what other trends from the event resonated most for you? Uh, sure. I think that you said it rightly, the convergence is not just happening, but now it was very evident on the sh- uh, exhibit floor as you went around. Uh, so, for example, I saw first time applications uh, uh, for IoT, smart IoT and edge computing, which are different than the canonical video uh, analytics kind of applications people have been showing off for multiple years. Uh, the second one I noticed is that the aura, which is the 5G revolution, uh, it, it's not a question of if, but it's a question of when. When multiple operators, including some of the topmost uh, operators in Europe, mention that they are into field trials, they're starting field trials, and they're going to go into commercial deployments next year. So it looks like that's a, that's a big change for me, right? And the third one is that I think in terms of the ecosystem, lots of new application developers targeting edge computing, uh, oran based applications smart iot those kind of things so that's a thriving ecosystem that i noticed this time absolutely i totally agree with that and i think the power of collaboration as well definitely struck me as really being center stage these partnerships and co-creation i love that and also things like sustainability and i'll come back to a couple of those a bit later on if i may but you mm-hmm. mentioned there about oran and you're absolutely right there was an amazing session you know the dedicated forum i really enjoyed that um, and I'd love to drill in a little bit more about what you're seeing as some of the key opportunities and also obviously acknowledging any challenges along the way as well. And maybe as one example of that, and again, kind of got that theme of the power of partnership. If you could share a bit more about what you've announced with Vodafone and Parallel Wireless as well. It'd be great to hear more about that use case trial. That's right. I think the success of Oran, that which is telcos are really pushing to open up the ecosystem so that they can go away both from traditional architecture, which is vertically integrated, but also the traditional supply chain, right? So traditional vendors that are used to now two vendors or three vendors. So I think the success of that is going to mainly depend on partnerships and collaboration in an open ecosystem. So what we did at the Vodafone Field Trials now is that we are partnering with Parallel Wireless because our focus is not on regaining radio expertise. That we leave it to other players. But we want to make sure that we become part of the ecosystem providing valuable pieces such as RAN intelligence controller, which is like an operating system for the RAN. And also provide an open ecosystem using an SDK so anyone can develop applications. And that will lead to service agility because traditionally the operators cannot introduce a new service without waiting for three to six months because they have to wait for traditional vendor to enable it. With this kind of open ecosystem where partners are collaborating, you can increase service agility because anyone can introduce a new application very quickly. So that's the other exciting part. I love that. I love that. And so many benefits as well, because you know, we're affecting by kind of scaling up this trajectory, you know, reducing things around integration challenges, improving resiliency, um, okay. tackling automation, et cetera, as well. Also personalization of user experiences. There's so many examples, isn't there, in terms of TCO? Yeah, so I think the automation is key, as you said, right? Because if you are going to have multiple players supplying multiple pieces, somebody has to integrate them and make sure they're resilient and they meet the telco criteria for reliable delivery. So automation plays a very key role. And that's where we are investing in making sure we provide automation for edge clouds, many edge clouds, which are going to be thousands of them in a densely populated area. You have to make sure the whole stack can be automated, integrated, 
and not lose any reliability component. The other is personalized experience, like you said. It's all about delivering consumer content, which can lead to personalized experience and you can charge for that. Because one of the challenges with 5G is that you do not, service providers do not want to stay being just providing basic connectivity provider. With all this investment in spectrum and infrastructure, they have to be able to monetize. And I do see there's an opportunity to deliver personalized experiences because of 5G's ultra reliable, low latency characteristic, and massive machine to machine communication with high bandwidth and so on. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'll send some links as well. When, when we publicize the episode, there's some great new research that's just come out as well. They talked about it at the event, GSMA in particular, um, but really bringing to the fore the new value and the new use cases to be created and yet to be created for that matter as well. So very much a shared value proposition. So we definitely put some links in for that as well. I think we are at an inflection point similar to what happened with the iPhone App Store. When the iPhone App Store was introduced, it really opened up. The applications, use cases that we had not even imagined before using a smartphone. I think with similar thing is possible with 5G if we enable the ecosystem uh, and an open ecosystem. Absolutely. It's a great example there. Yeah, you touched on it earlier as well with the developer ecosystem, X apps, R apps, et cetera, as well. So really kind of bringing forward this kind of virtual circle of innovation that's really transforming the value chain as well. I think that the iPhone app store moment is a great example to kind of translate that to the audience as well. So I love that. It's fantastic. And I wonder as well if we could bring to life another of the partnerships that we saw at MWC. So the partnership with Intel, for example, as well. So I had the pleasure to experience some of those demonstrations firsthand. But I wonder if you could bring them to life some of the announcements there as well for the audience today. Sure. I think Intel traditionally has always invested in horizontal ecosystems because they want to enable chip cells by creating as broad and as horizontal ecosystem as possible. So we took advantage of that by partnering with them. They are uh, investing in FlexRAM, which is a sort of horizontal platform with L1, L2 software that they provide freely to anyone. We're building upon that to integrate our containerized routing stack. So we created virtualized cell set router. We have a design in Rakuten for all of Japanese install uh, instances will be powered by our cloud native router. Similar thing we are taking to the ORAN. We are taking the FlexSand platform, integrating with our RIC, RAN intelligence controller, some of the X apps coming from us, from third parties like Cohere and Intel, and all of that together can be delivered as a platform. So I'm really excited about that partnership. I love that too. Exactly. Power of partnership is the way forward. I love that. Fantastic. And I'm going to go on to another kind of this innovation trajectory we're talking about today and power convergence again. So we go on to a different example of that. So one, one other one that struck me as well is kind of what we're seeing with infrastructure spending at the moment. So the US would be a great example of this. Also countries like Germany as well, really prioritizing fiber connectivity. So that investment in fiber based wireline connectivity very much accelerating in those two countries in particular, but many others as well. But also at the time, same time, we're seeing 5G expanding with mobile bandwidth, capacity, and again, going back to use cases, enabling new ones as well. So the That's metro right. is a place where all this connectivity is converging. We've got this new distributed architecture, and all this is coming together with massive scalable IP fabric too. So I wonder if we could drill into that a bit more and really bring to life the opportunity, but equally the risks as well with this new trend and how you overcome that. Oh, thank you. I think you said it well, the convergence of wireline and wireless is happening in the metro. So it's good that fiber connectivity is increasing, even in the US, some of the operators are massively spending. The new Biden infrastructure bill is also going to expand that to rural areas. Plus 5G brings very high bandwidth and all of that comes together in metro. And that creates a new opportunity because what's happening in the metro is that you traditionally use the ring architecture with hierarchical routing. That doesn't work very well when you have to have a very distributed architecture to support this convergence happening, right? The multiple aggregation points, each one of them look like mini edge clouds. They all have to be connected together with a massively scalable IP fabric. And that's where Juniper comes in. We are uh, one of the best IP fabric routing company. So we're taking advantage of that by introducing a new Metro cloud pl uh, platform. We call it a cloud Metro portfolio, which allows you to use IP fabric, but also have aggregation points where you can use the distributed architecture, very disaggregated architecture. So our ACX series of products are great for aggregation points. Then of course we have a MX and PTX series of routers, which are great for massively scalable IP fabric. 
Then we also uh, addressed the 5G connectivity from front hall to mid hall to back hall by introducing virtualized cell site router, which is purely based on one UX86 servers and our software. So if you all add up that together and to add to add our Paragon automation suite, which tries to address the, all the aspects of the IP fabric network, starting from design, capacity planning, day zero, day one, day two operations, automating all of that and collecting data telemetry from the network, which we can fit into our machine learning models and engines. So we can create this virtuous sort of a cycle of the feedback to fit into the automation to optimize the network. So we're really excited about that. I love that. I love the end-to-end aspect of that. And you, you literally, I was going to ask you about, you know, role of disaggregation, cloud native architecture, but you literally went around looking at every aspect that's been covered there. So I, I think you've already answered that already, which is amazing. I love, I love how you brought that to life. And, and again, really emphasizing this holistic, but integrated take and supporting all these different elements of that innovation, which is brilliant. And again, you mentioned about mini edge clouds to support IoT aggregation as well. And I'd love to just t- touch on some of those use cases again. So I'd love to bring it to life for the audience. So you know, things like cloud gaming, VR, AR, et cetera, as well. So this is really exciting. And I just wanted to, if we could bring, you touched on Juniper already, but just broadly as well for the sector, what role do you see as telcos as kind of the hub of the wheel for enabling all of this? Yeah, so I think uh, the mini edge clouds are aggregation points, as well as the very good platforms for delivering services which are latency latency sensitive. The telcos, on the other hand, have a challenge. How do they monetize? How do they get people to pay for more than just basic connectivity that they did with 4G? I look at Gen Z and millennials, my daughter or that generation. They are willing to pay for additional experiences because they grew up in a more of a um, social media environment. So imagine going to NFL stadium, you're watching a game, and at the same time, you get personalized content delivered, right? Or you are in concert and you are also getting personalized content about your favorite stars, favorite artists, and all. All that plus uh, metaverse-based gaming, metaverse-based uh, experiences can be delivered yeah. at the edge of the network, just many edge clouds. And all those applications require not just edge computing but 5G connectivity with the ultra reliable low latency, and that can be monetized. People are used to paying for those kind of things, especially the younger generations. So I really think that there are applications now coming to four which will justify telco spending, but also allow them to monetize it. I love that. And and you've, you've prompted something else there, which again, I would say Gen Z or Gen Z is, is kind of leading the way on. So you're absolutely right that that different expectations and behaviours and that demand for personalization of experience. And I'd love to see that with my football team as well with Southampton. So I'll put a little shout out for them there as well. But you're right, you're you're willing to do more to get that, that, that experience. Um, but also, I think they're leading the way in another area as well, in terms of this kind of values alignment and, and pushing forward in areas like sustainability, for example, That's the right. SDGs more broadly as well. And again, I see this sector, it's absolutely vital to the hub of the wheel, so to speak, in labelling change for social impact, as well as business impact and bring that together so just love to kind of round our conversation on an area that's so close to heart i know for both of us so could you tell more about juniper's commitment to sustainability and what you're doing to help make networking more sustainable because i think there's a really great leadership point and i think it inspire other people to, to do the same and build that contagion of change absolutely we have both a business ethical and social responsibility to lead the way so one of the things we have done recently we announced that will be carbon neutral in the next two three years Right as an operation of what we do with our business. But more importantly, our products, we are focusing on making them more sustainable. We make custom chips for our routers. They save as much as 40% power compared to the merchant silicon when it comes to uh, delivering products. And these are the routers and um, uh, switches that go into massive networks. The third part we are doing is that which effort I've started with some other CTOs in the industry, which is really, let's look at the network protocol stack. Many years we have not looked at how to optimize that for energy efficiency. So I'll give a simple example. A lot of people are now writing applications in microservices. These microservices communicate a lot, but you could optimize them for energy efficiencies in at least two ways. One, you don't have to optimize each microservice for highest performance. There's a good enough performance you reach. After that, you should look at energy efficiency. Do I really want to use more compute, more communication uh, to get more performance when it doesn't matter? 
The second thing, when you're communicating, anytime the packet goes over the network or Ethernet interface, it consumes more energy. But if you happen to notice that some microservices are communicating more frequently, you can co-locate them on the same physical core or virtual core and reducing the amount of energy used. So there are lots of these ideas and I want to create an industry standard around it. So we create a benchmark and that benchmark can be measured. All of us right, in the industry can measuring, start measuring our products against those sustainability indices. So I started the effort with some other uh, CTOs and we'll go public with that soon as a sort of industry working group. I love that. That is amazing. Again, it's that power of industry coming together to tackle these challenges and change a narrative about them. In fact, it's showing how you can create shared value by doing this the right way. You know, all that increased efficiency has to be good for the organization, but equally it's good for the planet at the same time. So I love the fact that you've given us a sneak peek of what's to come there, which is brilliant, Raj. So thank you so much for doing that. And I can't wait to, to sharing more about that when you go live on that shortly. And believe me, anything I can do to support that, I would love to, because I think it's just incredibly important work so thank you what a way to end it Raj thank you so much for joining us today on the show thank you my absolute pleasure and for everyone listening as well thank you so much for joining us and a lot of the examples we've shared in this episode as well we'll put them in the show notes we'll create links and we'll keep in touch as well about the announcement that Raj has made as well today about sustainability when that goes live very shortly so thank you all for watching us on tomorrow's tech today thank you Thanks for listening to this episode of Tomorrow's Tech Today. If you enjoy what we're doing, please subscribe to us and leave a review. It really means a lot. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram and see more behind the scenes video footage on YouTube. Thanks for listening.